Well, a very warm welcome everyone to the parish of St Peter and St Paul Tunbridge this morning or whenever you're joining us. So perhaps I should say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. But what is most important is that we are joining as one family with God here in our midst, wherever we are. And thanks to the wonders of modern technology, we can share together in a Bible reading, reflection and prayer. And indeed, perhaps also reflecting on the past 12 months, as no doubt many of us were doing yesterday, a year on from the imposition of the first UK lockdown. So let's quieten our hearts and minds now, shall we, uh, for an opening prayer. Let us pray. God of love, as we think about all that has changed this year, help us to trust that you are always with us. As we remember those who have died, help us to trust that they are at peace with you. As we reach out to others with kindness and care, may hope shine out in every heart and home. Amen. And the collect for this week. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with us in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So our reading this morning comes from John chapter 12 and I'm beginning to read at verse 1. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honour. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but to see Lazarus, whom he'd raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, for on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. This is, of course, a very well-known reading and a very well-known story. And it has parallels in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke. Luke's account, however, is likely to be referring to a different episode earlier in Jesus' ministry. Matthew and Mark appear to be describing the same event as John, although in their accounts it is Jesus' head rather than his feet which is anointed. But as we read John's account, we can sense an increasing tension, movement towards a climax as Jesus is on the final stage of his journey to, Beth to Jerusalem. And he stopped off in Bethany. In John's Gospel, the public ministry of Jesus begins with a wedding feast in Cana. Now that ministry is coming to an end with another social event, but one with a very different tone. A meal is being held in his honour, with Martha among the servers and Lazarus among the guests. 
The latter's presence is significant because he is seen as a symbol of Jesus' ministry since Jesus brought him back from the dead. And you won't have failed to notice that at the end of our reading, the chief priests were, make, were making plans to kill Lazarus as a, as a witness, as, a, and as evidence of Jesus' ministry, as well as Jesus himself. Jesus is the focal point of all this, and it's interesting to look at the attitudes of the three main individual characters in the story towards him. Martha is serving at table. She loved Jesus, and she was a practical woman who showed her love through the work of her hands. No shame in that, since service in those ways is no less important than a more public ministry. Then there is Mary, who also loved Jesus, but demonstrated it very differently. We will come back in a moment to what we can learn from Mary's behaviour. And well, what about Judas? Jesus must have trusted Judas for making keeper of the money purse. Maybe he thought that by doing that, Judas would really feel he was needed. But clearly that failed. Judas loved money so much that he became a thief and then a traitor for its sake. But, as we promised just now, let's return to Mary and see what her extraordinary action provides in the way of guidance to us in how we should be serving our Lord. I have six points, but remembering and executing even a few of those would be a good start. One, we should be humble. Mary's anointing of Jesus' feet was a real demonstration of humble service. Mary is mentioned three times in the Gospel and each in association with Jesus and each in association with Jesus' feet. On the other occasions, she fell at Jesus' feet in John chapter 11 and then was sitting listening at Jesus' feet, Luke chapter 10. True service equals wholehearted commitment. Two, we should be perceptive. Mary had some sense, even if not absolutely complete, of where Jesus was at, probably because she had sat at his feet, listening. If we do the same, we can learn how we are meant to be serving Jesus. But we do need to listen to him. We need to make time and be still to do just that. Three, we should be timely. Jesus says in our passage, it was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. But Mary took the opportunity that was given her. At that moment, if she'd waited any longer, that moment would have passed and she would have lost that opportunity. Some things we can do any time, any old time will do. Others we just need to take the chance when it arises. And now is the time to serve Jesus. Four, we should be resilient and perhaps unselfconscious. By even letting down her hair in public, Mary was going against convention. But she didn't care. She was driven by her love for Jesus. She even faced criticism, didn't she, from Jesus' own disciples, of whom Judas in this account is the spokesperson. As Christians, we might reasonably expect opposition from the outside world but it can also come from fellow Christians. Jesus recognised Mary's service. He wasn't saying that giving to the poor was unimportant, but that the cross must be central in a disciple's life. Fifth, we should be generous. Mary's gift of nard was extravagant, but Jesus deserves the best we can give. Motivation is key here. We should give out of a genuine love, not for some ego-boosting reason. Sixth, we should be fruitful. And the whole house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. That simple but sacrificial act of anointing Jesus' feet, a humble act of devotion, spread much further 
The fragrance was throughout the house. Sincere service to Jesus can touch lives and in ways we will never know. As Paul wrote in the first letter to the Corinthians, Therefore, dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your, your labour in the Lord is not in vain. I think that sums up what we've learnt through Mary's actions. Be humble, be perceptive, be timely, be resilient, be generous and be fruitful. Humble, perceptive, timely, resilient, generous and fruitful. You never know whose hearts you may touch for the Lord. So a moment's quiet just to reflect before we move into our time of prayer. Heavenly Father, whether we are instinctively Martha's or Mary's, or a mixture of both, may we be steadfast in our desire to serve you with those gifts you have given to each one of us. And in the words of the prayer of St Richard of Chichester, thanks be to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have given us, for all the pains and insults which you have borne for us, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And a prayer for our current times. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we might rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let's all join as one, albeit physically separated, in the words that Jesus taught us, using the contemporary version. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us in worship today. It's been a pleasure to be able to share with you. So do keep an eye on our website as things are changing and we are now beginning to open up the church as from Easter. So keep a watch there um, and keep up to speed um, as you need to. And please, please be in touch with us if we can help or support you in any way. So let's close with a blessing. Christ crucified, draw us to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all, those we love and those we pray for now and always. Amen.